today on Transformation with Pastor Andy Ikebedo. And he took bread and gave thanks and break it and gave unto them saying, This is my body which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. Likewise also the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shared for you. Thank you, everlasting Father, for the reading of your word. This day I ask, let the mystery of the communion table be unraveled before our eyes today. Let everyone here under the sound of my voice, let them receive a deeper understanding of the mystery of the communion. We give you all the praise and all the honor. Even in Jesus' precious and matchless name we pray. Lord, I activate the power behind the communion table. Let it be made available to every hearer today. Even in Jesus' name we pray. Say neighbor, he has paid the price. Please sit down. Let me read again that text for you from the Passion Translation. The Bible tells us then Jesus lifted up a loaf, a loaf. And after praying a prayer of thanksgiving to God, he gave each of the apostles a piece of the bread, saying, this loaf is my body, which is now being offered to you. Now, that's why I want to read this one. It says, always eat it to remember me. Always eat it to remember me. So, the number one reason why we eat the communion is to remember him. And if you have been in this house for a while, you know that the word remember is a compound word. Remember. It means to be reconnected. To be reconnected. To be reconnected. Say, so always eat this to be reconnected to me. To be reconnected to what I did for you at Calvary's cross. After supper was over, he lifted up the cup again and said, this cup is my blood of the new covenant I make with you this day. And it will be poured out soon for all of you. His blood is the cup of the new covenant. Let us read that part, verse 20 from Message Bible quickly. He did the same with the cup after supper saying, this cup is the new covenant written in my blood. The new covenant is written, is ratified, is sealed, is stamped with the blood of Jesus. What is the communion table? Ladies and gentlemen, partaking of the communion is not to satisfy some physical hunger. But the communion is simply a reenactment of a powerful spiritual mystery. Oftentimes I tell people that in the occultic world, anytime they want something massive, they offer blood sacrifice. If it is something small, they use the blood of chicken. Something average, they use the blood of goats. Something big, they use the blood of cows. But if it's something very, very, very difficult, what do they do? They use the blood of human beings. Error. But it's the principle. Likewise, in our kingdom, we also offer blood sacrifice. But what is good about this kingdom is that that blood sacrifice was offered once and for all. A Calvary cross. Jesus offered his blood once and for all. 
So anytime we come to the communion table, we are reenacting that sacrifice. Just the same way whenever people want to go to their occultic temple, they go with the sacrifice to tell the deity that we are still loyal. Are you still here? Are you still here? What do they do? They take, occult, they take sacrifices to their temple to tell their deity that they are still loyal. They go there to maintain their covenant to that deity. When they go, they go with sacrifices. So every time we come to the communion table, we are presenting a fresh blood. We are reenacting the sacrifice of Jesus. Because oftentimes we partake of the communion with a traditional and a religious mindset. We do things without knowing what we do. In the kingdom, it is not activity that benefits you. It's understanding. Grace and peace be multiplied unto you according to your knowledge. According to your knowledge. Grace grows when you grow in knowledge. Today, you are going to grow in knowledge concerning the communion table. Shall glory to Jesus. The communion is not a snack. It's not something we'll snack at once in a while or snack on once in a while. The communion is a miracle meal. Say neighbor. The communion is a miracle meal. John's Gospel, chapter 6, verses 53 to 56, quickly. John 6, 53 to 56, KJV. Then Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, except you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Are you saying it? Except you do what? You eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Whoso eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood hath eternal life, and I will raise him up the last day. For my flesh, come on, come on, come on, is what? It's meat indeed, and my blood is drink indeed. He that eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood dwelleth in me and I in him. This scripture is not saying that we, are, we become born again when we eat the communion. What it's saying here is that even as believers, the more we do this always, the more our fellowship, our koinonia, our connectivity, our connection with him is solidified. So do this always in remembrance of me. Shall glory to Jesus. Say neighbor, the flesh of Jesus is meat indeed. His blood is drink indeed. Leviticus chapter 17 verse 11. We're looking at the communion. Leviticus 17 11. For the life of the flesh is what? I cannot hear you. So when you are taking the communion, what are you taking? You are taking in by faith the very life of Jesus Christ. Whenever you are taking the communion, you are not snacking on wafers, on juice. What are you taking? By faith, you are taking in the very life of Jesus Christ. Shall glory to Jesus. When you take it in, the, the Holy Communion empowers us to live like Jesus Christ. It empowers us to live like Jesus Christ. Jesus says in John chapter 6 verse 58, he says, this is that bread, now I'm talking about Jesus Christ, which came down from heaven, not as your fathers did eat manna and are dead. He that eateth of this bread shall live forever. Now we are seeing something that is superior to the manna that they ate in the wilderness. Let's look at the power of the manna of the old covenant. Psalm 105 verse 37. He brought them forth also with silver and gold 
and there was not one feeble person among the tribes. Are you seeing here? Are you seeing it here? Are you seeing it here? Because they ate manna for 40 years. None was feeble. None was feeble. None was feeble. None was sick. None died of disease. Because they ate manna. But John 6.58 is telling us uh, there is something that is superior to that manna. That the communion is superior to the manna. Superior to the manna. Somebody shout, I have something superior. I cannot hear a shout, I have something superior. In the name of Jesus Christ, anyone who partakes of this communion today, we banish every iota of feebleness in your life. In the name of Jesus Christ, we come against every sickness in your body, in your mind, in your soul. In the name of Jesus Christ, none of them was feeble. None with none, none. Therefore today, I declare by faith, nobody here will be feeble again. In the name of Jesus Christ. I said nobody here will be feeble again in the name of Jesus Christ. First Kings 19, verses 6, 7, and 8. Let me show you what you're about to receive. Remember, we're talking about faith. The just shall live by his what? Faith. The world that was preached was preached to them also and also to us. But what was preached did not prosper them. It didn't profit them. Why? They did not receive it with faith. But what we are sharing today may not profit you if you don't receive it with faith. Now, the story here is that Elijah was running away from Jezebel. And he got somewhere and he hid himself under a tree and he said, Lord, it is better that you kill me. He was so afraid. I said, Lord, it's better that I die. And he slept off. And he was awoken by an angel. When he woke up, he saw bread that was freshly baked. The angel said, arise and eat. He took the first one. Slept off again, second time. Now I think we are picking it from the third time. Because of time. From verse 7. And this is the third time the angel gave him the food. And he looked and behold, there was a cake baking on the coals and a cruise of water at his head. And he did eat and drink and laid him down again. And the angel of the Lord came again the second time, touched him and said, Arise and eat because the journey is too great for thee. Is anybody here that is pursuing a big vision? Anybody here that has caught a great vision that you are pursuing? Pay attention. And he arose and did eat and drink. Now, look at what that did for him. And he went in the strength of that food. For 40 days and 40 nights unto Horeb, the mount of God. He went in the strength of that meal. He went in the strength of that meal. Somebody here, you are going to go in the strength of today's meal. You're going to go far. You're going to travel far. Because strength is coming your way. Somebody here, as you partake of this communion, you'll be infused with divine strength. Divine strength to run the race that is set before you. I can't hear your amen. amen. I can't hear your amen. amen. As you partake of today's communion, every streak of wickedness and weakness and feebleness and disease disappears from you in the name of Jesus Christ. Receive supernatural strength in the name of Jesus Christ. The communion will give you divine insight. Divine insight. Luke 24, verse 30 and 31. Divine insight. Now, this is the story of disciples. After they have crucified Jesus and they were walking down 
escaping from Jerusalem on the way to Emmaus. And Jesus joined himself to them and they didn't know it was Jesus. And Jesus asked them, why, why, why are you guys looking so sad? And they said, are you the only man in Jerusalem that doesn't know what happened today? And Jesus said, what happened? And they said to tell Jesus what happened about how Jesus was crucified. And the Bible said that Jesus started to expound to them the mysteries of the scriptures. How it was written that the Son of Man will come and how it was written that he will die. And the Bible said that when they got to their city and it was getting late, they told Jesus to just stay with them for that he can pass the night with them so he can continue on the next day. They didn't know it was Jesus. They were disciples of Jesus and they didn't know it was Jesus. But yet they were disciples of Jesus and they didn't know it was Jesus. He spent time with them, talking with them. They didn't know it was Jesus. How did they know that it was him? Let's read and it came to pass because they brought up bread for him to eat. And it came to pass as he sat at meat, sat down with them to eat. He took bread and blessed it and break it and gave to them. And their eyes were opened and they knew him and he vanished out of their side. Disciples were with him. They didn't know him. If disciples' eyes were blind <laughs> and needed to be open, people who walked with him physically, you too, you need sight. Not physical sight, divine insight. Somebody here, as you partake of today's communion, you receive divine insight into that situation, into that challenge, into that trouble. Somebody here, you receive insight as how to solve that problem in your business. How to solve that problem in your family and in your place of work. Receive divine insight in the name of Jesus Christ. I can't hear your amen. There's a marriage here that has been struggling and you have done all you know how to solve, but you have not been able to solve it. But by the virtue and the power of today's communion table, as you partake of today's communion table, you receive divine insight as to how to solve that problem in the name of Jesus Christ. I can hear your amen. amen. What is in the flesh? What is in the flesh? Number one, the life of God is in the flesh. The life of God is in the flesh. John 6, 58 to, 48 to 50. John 6, 48 to 50. says, I am that bread of life. I am that bread of life. I am that bread of life. Your fathers did eat manna in the wilderness and are dead. This is the bread which cometh down from heaven that a man may eat thereof and not what? Die. The flesh is the very life of Jesus. He said, I am the bread of life. Which means when you partake of the communion table, what are you partaking? You are partaking of the bread of life. Of the bread of life in the name of Jesus Christ. The bread of life will give you strength. I said the bread of life will give you divine strength in the name of Jesus Christ. What is in the flesh? The flesh is that miracle meal that neutralizes poison. That neutralizes poison. Anything in your system that is killing you is poisonous. Anything in your system that is killing you is poison. The meal neutralizes every poison. I said the meal neutralizes every poison. 2 Kings 4, 39 and 41. If you are here and you have noticed that things are usually crawling on your body, you need to this meal. You are here, you have ulcer. Pep, whatever it is, is, is it peptic or... <laughs> peptic ulcer. Any kind of ulcer. The answer is in the meal. You hear today you have any kind of cancer in your system. The answer is in the meal. Any form of poison, dangerous infections, the answer is in the meal. Whether it's HIV, whether it's COVID-19, I don't know what it is. Whatever in your system that is killing you, the answer, the antidote, the panacea is in today's meal. Shall glory to Jesus. 2 Kings 4, 39 to 41. And one went out into the field to gather herbs to cook. 
and found a wild vine and gathered thereof wild gods, his lap full, and came and shred them into the pot of pottery. They were cooking beans and they needed vegetables to add to the beans. Right? Or into your yam porridge. So what did they do? They went out and gathered herbs. They wanted uh, vegetables. And as they were gathering it, they gathered a poisonous leaf. Shout glory to Jesus. And they didn't know. So, when the meal was cooked, they poured out for the men to eat. And it came to pass, as they were eating of the pottage, that they cried out and said, O thou man of God, there is death in the pot. And they could not eat thereof. Next verse. And he said, Then bring meal. What's meal? Flour. And he cast the meal into the pot and said, Katalabu Kotolaba, pour out for the people that they may eat and there was no harm in the poor. <laughs> Today, your body is the pot. Today, the communion is the meal. As it enters your body, it will neutralize every poisonous substance in your life. In the name of Jesus Christ, every toxic, every poisonous substance in your body will be neutralized today by the meal of the communion in the name of Jesus Christ. I can't hear your amen. I can't hear your amen. The flesh is the New Testament manner. The manner that they ate and none was feeble. The communion is the New Testament manner. But guess what? Everything in the Old Testament is a shadow of the things in the New. If that is true, the manner of the Old Testament is a shadow of the manner of the New. The manner of the New is better. We have now a more excellent covenant. The manner of the New is more excellent, more powerful, more valuable than the manner of the old. Shall glory to Jesus. Say, because of the covenant. Say, because of the covenant. The new covenant. As I partake of today's communion. Oh my God. I'll be healed from the crown of my head to the soles of my feet. In the name of Jesus Christ. No more feebleness. If you believe it, I believe it. Therefore, I declare that every form of weakness in anyone's health, in anyone's body, the moment this New Testament manner enters your mouth, enters your system, every feebleness is destroyed. I said every feebleness is destroyed. Every growth is destroyed. Every tumor is destroyed. Every cancer is destroyed. Blood sugar, diabetes is destroyed. High blood pressure is destroyed. In the name of Jesus Christ. Kidney infection is destroyed. In the name of Jesus Christ. Fibroid melts away. In the name of Jesus Christ. Ovarian cyst is, is, is destroyed in the name of Jesus Christ. I can hear your amen. I can hear, hear your amen. Yes. Migraine headache ceases in the name of Jesus Christ. Weakness, palpitation of the heart, it ceases in the name of Jesus Christ. Somebody here, you always feel dizzy. By the time you partake of today's communion, every iota of dizziness is is destroyed out of your life in the name of Jesus Christ. Shout glory to Jesus Christ. I don't know who I'm talking to. You always have gas, gas, gas in your system. Gas, gas. It makes you uncomfortable. By the virtue of today's communion, every such gas is healed in Jesus' name. What is in the blood? The blood contains the divine nature. The life of the flesh is in the blood. Now hear this. 
when we partake of the blood of Jesus, Jesus said, this is the cup of my blood, which means when we partake of it, we are partaking of the blood of Jesus Christ. We share the same blood group with Christ. So we are taking the blood of someone who has survived every sickness. Every malady known to man. And we are transfusing that blood into our own blood. He survived sickle cell. He survived all forms of cancer. He survived all forms of mental disease. All the title nine divisions of diseases in life, they survived it. Because the Bible said they put the sicknesses of the world upon him. And he survived it. So the biggest inoculation, the most powerful inoculation, the most powerful vaccination is the vaccination of the blood of Jesus. I don't know about you, my blood group is the blood group of Jesus Christ. I don't know about you, maybe your own is the one that your father gave you. Maybe that's the one you are insisting on. The way I'm, the one I'm, I am insisting on by faith is the blood group of him who survived every other thing. Who bore the sickness, hung on the cross, died. But get what? He rose again. Can I go deeper as we pray? Where is the blood of Jesus now? Because when Jesus was crucified, when he, when he resurrected, he went to his disciples and presented himself to them. But Thomas was not there. And when Thomas came back, and the Bible said the disciples kept telling Thomas that the Lord came, the Lord came, the Lord came, he has, he has risen. He said, unless I see with my eyes, unless I see him and put my hand in his hand where they put the nails, and put my hand in his side where they pierced it, I will never believe I'm going somewhere. So Jesus appeared on a certain day when Thomas was there. And he told Thomas, put your hand in my palms. Put your hand on my side. This is my question. How can a ghost have a body? There are many times he appeared before them. They went fishing. They caught nothing. He brought them to, the, to, to shore. He, by, the, by the time they were coming back to shore, he had already roasted fish for them and gave them meat and they ate. How can he understand? So my, this is my question. When he appeared and he had wounds here, why wasn't the blood coming out? He was indeed alive. How can something, someone without blood have physical presence and personality? Why? Because the blood, the entire blood of Jesus is on the mercy seat of God. That's where the whole blood is. But anyone who appropriates that blood by faith, the blood on the mercy seat will start to speak for you. No wonder the Bible says the blood of Jesus picketh better things than the blood of Abel. So the, time, the next time the devil looks at you and said you are not a candidate for God's blessing because you committed adultery, you committed fornication, or you did this, you did that. The blood on the message it said, no sir, it's under the blood. Ah, I see here. Are you still here? Are you still here? 
The next time the devil says, this one deserves to be inflicted and infected with HIV. The blood of the mercy seat. So it's under the blood. Under the blood. Why did the Bible say there is therefore now no condemnation for those that are in Christ Jesus? Because the blood is speaking. It's speaking. It's a force. It's a force. Do you know, in a nation like South Africa, it's, it's almost impossible to see an indigenous South African born in South Africa that has sickle cell. Their blood rejects sickle cell. What about the blood of Jesus? The blood you are about to partake of today will reject everything that is wrong with your system. The blood will speak against every evil covenant attacking your destiny from the village, from your family, from other evil covenants you have entered. Whether you used to be in the secret cult and you have renounced it today by the power of the potency in the blood of Jesus, every illegitimate, every illegal, every evil covenant you entered into knowingly or unknowingly, they must be broken today in the name of Jesus Christ. I can't hear your amen. I can't hear your amen. So when you are partaking of the communion, you're actually doing what is called a divine blood transfusion. Nothing stops the power of the blood. No sin, no devil, no covenant can speak against the blood. Jump on your feet as we pray. The first thing I want you to do this morning before we start to pray in that is say, Lord, go to the Lord and start to repent of every known sin. Say, Lord, I repent of every sin in my life. I plead the blood of Jesus. Come and talk to him. The Bible spoke about people who ate the, the communion unworthily. Say, because they ate it unworthily, some died. Some were even sick because they ate it unworthily. How do you eat it wordly? Two ways. You make sure you're in Christ Jesus. That the blood is speaking for you. You are under the blood covenant. And secondly, you honor the blood and the flesh of Jesus. You honor the communion table. You don't partake it in a mocking fashion. You don't partake it in a joking way. You partake of it honorably. With reverence that you are actually reenacting a covenant with our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Say, as often as you do this, do it in remembrance of me. As often as you do this. As often as you do this. As often as you do this. Do it in remembrance of me. Now I want you to lift up your right hand and start to speak the blood of Jesus over difficulties in your life. Start to plead the blood of Jesus over challenges in your life, challenges in your health. Start to appropriate the blood of Jesus. Say, so this day I appropriate the blood of Jesus, the very blood of Jesus into that situation, into that challenge, into that health condition. Whatever it is that is stealing your Christian joy that is still in the joy of your salvation. Open your mouth and start to appropriate the blood of Jesus. Ask the blood of Jesus to speak on your behalf. Start to declare, let today's communion be a blood transfusion. Let it be a communion that neutralizes every poison in my system. Every poison in my system commanded to be neutralized. This is a House on the Rock about production. Be part of any of our life-transforming services every Sunday, 8 a.m. to 9.30 a.m. 
or 9.30 a.m. to 11 a.m. or 11 a.m. to 12.30 p.m. At 3 Covenant Close, behind Rufus Obi Chemist, along Abowe Road, Abba Abia State. You can also follow us on Facebook at House on the Rock, Abba, and on Instagram at HOTR, Abba. For prayers and counseling, please call 0810-892-4731. Again, 0810-892-4731. Stay blessed.